que my dear friend, President Aloni Moreno, dear uh, Carlos, dear Tomás, uh, thank you so much for this invitation uh, to the Inter-American Institute for Democracy. Distinguished uh, colleagues, ex-presidents, dear friends, journalists, colleague journalists, Some people have asked me uh, why uh, I am uh, wearing this uh, eye uh, patch. I don't know if you know the story of the pirate. Uh, what happened to your leg? It's a wooden leg. No, I, the, the, the ship uh, was having trouble. I had to, I had to go in a, in a floater device and a shark uh, ate my leg. And the arm, the problem, well, with uh, the uh, the hook, I was in uh, fighting, and with uh, uh, my my hand uh, went off. And the eyes, well, I was a captain of a ship, and they and <laughs> I was looking at the stars, and a seagull went by, and uh, the the. Um, something from the seagull fell on me and uh, he said why and that's what happened no I was just uh, trying the hook using the hook so anyway thank you so much uh, uh, we are very satisfied to see the result of this electoral process and today I want to express once again this gratitude to the Inter American Institute for Democracy for this uh, very pleasant opportunity to share with you, as uh, Carlos asked me, some of the uh, issues about the um, uh, immediate uh, process of the democracy in Colombia and the dangers that, in my opinion, are very latent today. And so, in in the situation that my country lives today, it is possible to identify five very serious uh, threats um, uh, that its democracy has. Number one, I think the worst of all the threats that the Colombian democracy has faced in the last uh, few years, even though it may seem as a paradox, is the peace agreement signed with the FARC. It's an agreement that took off the legit legitimacy and uh, turned off, it broke the uh, state uh, the state of justice because it was done without, without the uh, solidarity from the Colombian people that explicitly has said no to this fact. According to with the Constitution of Colombia, uh, this was uh, persons that were criminals and torturers and kidnappers and, and, and uh, persons that had violated and raped girls and boys, uh, sexual, um, sexual exploitators were legitimized and put in power without paying one only day in prison. And it gave a renewal to a traffic, uh, drug trafficking. This was a covenant that left in the Colombian society the message that crime pays, that it was possible to incline the balance of justice or to the favor of that who has the money to impose itself over any government or anything that. So I know that the made up image that the news media have painted about Colombia is very different, but the truth is that the government negotiated with a defeated guerrilla, uh, and the government was able just just went along with anything that the guerrilla wanted, and that was a very strong blow to democracy because it allowed 
that some individuals that only had us backing their own weapons gave them power. And this was a blow that was worse because of hundreds of thousands of victims of FARC that are claiming justice. And uh, I hope that uh, at some point or another, uh, I hope that a spark comes out that again uh, brings light to all the fields in Colombia. In uh, my country, I say it clearly, there is no peace, and there will not be peace uh, while they try to build up a new country in, based on impunity of those that have gravely committed crimes against our history. We see also the lack of equality in our countries that has been worsened, as President Macri said, as a consequence of the uh, pandemic of COVID-19. We need to mention that in Colombia, the poverty in the last year grew by more than 20%. So all the progress that we had had as to social topics were erased. If we are not able to bring an adequate and prompt reply that reverts the situation and that allows us to again uh, go uh, against the poverty and hunger, our country is going to think that democracy is not going to be what is going to be able to solve its problems. And then they're going to be tempted to go to the fields and uh, join all these persons that are offering milk and honey. And of course, later, they're going to be betrayed by them. And if we cannot adopt quickly and within democratic views adequate solutions, we're going to have uh, the, the consequence of populism, that black, a gruesome shadow that extends in the continent uh, making such damage everywhere is uh, terrible for democracy because it generates expectations that are very difficult, impossible to fulfill. It, um, it grows the hatred of classes because it says that the problems of all is because of an uh, oligarchy that uh, is trying to regulate economy to reach the new paradise. That paradise of the proletariat that over 100 years ago, Lenin had promised, and that is, except for Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, the countries have abandoned that failed model. Um, we need to bring new opportunities for all, for everybody. And we have demonstrated that the best is the education. We need to have access to a very good quality education in order to be able to get rid of the lack of equality. However, those that are saying, are talking about the lack of equality are precisely the ones that do not allow for education. But look, the children, the Colombian children, have the privilege to study, the ones that have the privilege to study in private schools that have internet in their houses with computers, that have a mixed system um, that can receive, they can receive virtual classes and receive other types of classes as well and to share with their uh, friends. Then we have the entity that groups the teachers in the public schools uh, does not accept children for classes because uh, knowing that many of these children cannot study at school. And one of the things that they demand is that all the children from 10 years old and over, they need to be vaccinated. And of course, that vaccine is not even available anywhere, anywhere in the world. So then with this, the de 
difference then about the quality of private and public education is definitely marked to the disadvantage of the poor. And we're talking about the education because it's the best instrument of all to uh, override uh, poverty and, uh, and, and have uh, less lack of equality. If one of these uh, persons then are come as a great problem solver, they, they're going to then be, uh, they're going to fall into this, uh, fall into these dictatorships that are promising so much as uh, it happens in Venezuela. Also, one of the consequences of populism in Colombia is what I would call the legal populism. In a slow process, but constant and sure, the legal populism has acquired the political populism through the constitutional court, the, the, the same organism that is supposed to protect uh, is actually breaking the indispensable balance uh, between the branch of the public power. The dictatorship of the judges is as uh, terrible as any other. Under the pretext of protecting the fundamental rights of citizens, our constitutional court has placed in very serious financial situations. For example, those uh, companies that uh, offer medical care, inclusive uh, allowing mm, patients to other countries for very expensive experimental treatments. Uh, they say, for example, that they need to give uh, dwellings uh, to all the persons that don't have any. And it has protected sometimes invaders of land without letting, letting them get uh, evicted. And uh, it has protected uh, many times manifestations in such a way that any of this can then avoid uh, traffics. Uh, and, and many of these are not in the Constitution and have been the product of the judicial development of the court. And this uh, has uh, been able to um, enforce places of corruption. Number four, corruption. Corruption has invaded the public administration in my country. You can almost say that it is a modus vivendi, international scandals as it happened in different countries by Odebrecht in Colombia. They financed the campaign of Santos. They even pay a bribe to police officers in the traffic. Corruption has caused to Colombia not only absurd amounts of money, but especially the affection, the impact on the system. Today, only a few Colombians trust their institutions. It's scary to read researches showing that Colombians do not trust the judiciary system. Democracy without effective justice won't be able to survive. The Supreme Court the highest court in Colombia was permeated by corruption. They speak about the cartel of judges when it was found out that there was a network of a corruption selling sentences. Polls show that the Congress has no prestige at all. That way, a democracy cannot survive. Democracy is like a Chinese vase that we admire. The artist took years to manufacture them, but they can be broken very easily. Democracy is very valuable, but very weak. And number five, trafficking, drug dealing, which is the karma in Colombia. Some former presidents 
speak and uh, speak throughout the world that the uh, bottle case drug was lost and that the strategy should be different. What a major mistake. Plan Colombia, Colombia plan is uh, clear evidence that yes, we can defeat drug dealing. The strategy of the plan was to reinforce the armed forces and law enforcement agencies, reinforcing justice, social investment, at the same time replacement of plantations, combating trafficking with spraying and also with a core responsibility. We Colombians produce that. You Americans consume the cocaine as well as the Europeans. With this strategy, pay attention, we were able to decrease illegal plantations in 1998 from 180 hectares of coke when I took over the government to less than 40,000 hectares in 20. Ten. Thanks to Plan Colombia. Plan Colombia is a clear evidence that yes, we can defeat trafficking. With Plan Colombia, the other productions were eliminated. As I said before, the policy under Juan Manuel Santos were different, and we are facing the consequences now. The largest drug cartel in the world is FARC. The Colombian cartels were replaced by the Mexican cartels. They domain, they master the uh, trade of cocaine, although the uh, Colombian narcos produce it. This is the legacy of Juan Manuel Santos. He delivered the spraying to FARC, and now we came up from 40,000 hectares. If we continue with the uh, Plan Colombia, we would uh, reduce that length. Now we have over 220,000 hectares of coke plantations uh, due to that decision that was delivered to FARC. We have to add that uh, now, with the technology now, we, instead of having 2.5 uh, harvest a year, to four harvest a year of coke leaves. In some regions, they're producing 5.8 tons of coke per hectare. If that's not enough, Narcos uh, modified the plants, and now they have a higher concentration of uh, cocaine chloride trade, increasing the productivity per hectare. The coke pure coke uh, production uh, st skipped from uh, 220 to 1137 metric uh, cube metric tons. Uh, President Santos uh, said recently that the uh, increase of plantations is due to uh, an economic cycle. That's very cynic. That increased because uh, he terminated the Plan Colombia. In order to meet the demands of FARC, he decided to cancel the spraying that was the main tool against the coke plantations. The judici uh, judicial li uh, links set by the judges are huge. The left wing is trying to avoid a glyph glyphosate and this is caused by the uh, chemicals used uh, for uh, destroying coke and the processing of coke and, of course, the deforestation to uh, plant coke. In order to process uh, the leaf and to produce uh, coke, they use uh, sulfur, acetone, permanganate, cement, gas, among other agents. They have identified uh, about 35 different chemicals used in processing the coke. And where do all those agents go? To the jungle and to the rivers. Those are rivers of the rainforests in huge amounts. According to the latest study by the United Nations, the demand for production of coke paste is 92,000 of solid 
aging some 469 millions of liters of liquid agents, among them 2.6 millions of liters of sulfur acid. The seizures of those agents is around 3% of the demand, meaning that 70% of those inputs or agents are a highly polluting waste in the jungle. We have to add there those used by the coke uh, planters in order to use uh, them as fertilizers, especially glyphosate used in high doses to uh, tackle the weed in the jungle. In order to plant coke, we have destroyed 2.8 million of hectares of uh, jungle and rainforest in the last 10 years. Trafficking is the number one enemy of the environment, of the Colombians. It's the number one enemy of our democracy and number one enemy of all the international community. My dear friends, with different actors and players, it seems to me that we have very similar circumstances against democracy in all Latin American countries. So we should defend and we should work together to be united to defend our values against statism and autocracy that wants to affect our principles. We should defend liberty and social justice. There is no democracy without democracy. Liberties, there is no democracy without justice, there is no democracy with hunger. Thank you very much.